Hello and welcome to Storybook Azeroth, where we adventure through some of the greatest stories in World of Warcraft. Today we're embracing the shadows as we recover the Blade of the Black Empire and for the first time meet the infamous Zalatath imprisoned within. Champion, I come at the behest of one who seeks to organize a stronger resistance to the Legion threat. If you would meet him at Fowl's Rest in Tearsfall Glades, he will guarantee both your safety and an opportunity to play a pivotal role in the conflict. Have a good one. Excellent. Fowl wants you to have this hearthstone. It should get you to his meeting place. Let's talk again soon. Hello there. You were not followed, were you? Are you the one I'm supposed to meet with? Why all the way out here? Forgive the secrecy. Old habits die hard. I am Alonsus Fowl. At times, I have been a leader of a church, a mindless minion of the Scourge, and a commander in a secret war. But I have always been a priest first. The Legion poses a threat that cannot be ignored. So I have decided to step out from the shadows. I believe we must unite priesthoods of all denominations against our common enemy. To lead this effort, we require a priest who is a proven champion to all people. I believe that you are that hero, but others must be convinced. Will you accept this challenge? We will accomplish much together. Can I take that as a yes? If you are ready, I'd like to get started immediately. I know you are extremely capable, but let's not leave anything to chance. The blade was taken somewhere in northwestern Tirisfall. I've marked a location on your map where you can begin your search. I have been working with Moira Tharrison to infiltrate the Twilight's Hammer cult. We've learned of an ancient and powerful Old God relic, a blade used at various points in history to wreak havoc. Moira's double agent informs us a new leader is rising and plans to cement his ascension using this weapon in an unholy ritual. You must find him, stop the ritual, and seize the artifact. We will meet in Dalaran afterwards. Praise be to the new leader. Once the hand of the Twilight Father, the Shadow Deacon has decided now is the time to regain our past glory. While the Twilight Father left to serve Deathwing, the Shadow Deacon maintained his role as a bishop in Stormwind. He continued infiltration and recruitment efforts there for some time until the fall of Deathwing and the Twilight Father. He then ordered what was left of our organization to go quiet and allow our foes their temporary victory. But then he found it, or perhaps it found him, the Black Blade. The Shadow Deacon was a cautious and calculating master, preferring the secrecy of the shadows to direct action. Ever since he found the blade, his entire demeanor has changed. Arrogant, commanding, audacious, he now favors a bold plan to restore power to the Twilight's Hammer. The blade is called Zalatath. It comes from an age before most of our races existed. We only have the scrawlings of previous holders to go from, while it is mostly the ravings of those that lacked the will to wield the blade. Many of them say the same things. They speak of the Black Empire, a time when our true masters ruled all of Azeroth. Massive sacrifices, living buildings filled with void energies. Sometimes we can hear the Shadow Deacon speaking to someone in his tent. He has mentioned the glory of the Black Empire as well. We have finished setting up a small base as per the Deacon's orders. He is driven, so sure this is the proper path for the Twilight's Hammer. 
We will be visible to our enemies, but he believes it is worth the risk. There is some sort of broken seal leading to a complex beneath the lake. The lake itself looks like it has suffered a titanic explosion thousands of years ago. Somehow, the Shadow Deacon knew of this location and knows that a Cthraxi died here. His plan is bold. He will use the Black Blade to resurrect this ancient being and restore the Twilight's Hammer to its pinnacle. Tomorrow I go in to command the forces holding the upper area. He has already dampened the wards and is preparing to enter the lower area. We have an intruder! Excellent! I was expecting him! But I don't think you were. What? You traitor! My said he'd be coming. I'm Slaghammer, paying my family's debt by hanging out with these buggers. <laughs> Let me take down this barrier. The Shadow Deacon's already below starting his ritual. To get there, we'll need to do a bit of work. If you have any questions, let me know, but we best hurry. We don't have much time, but you deserve some answers. What do you want to know about? The Shadow Deacon? The Blade? What the hell is going on? Ha! This was sort of sudden. Where are we? What's going on? Can you believe they found the Tomb of Tyr himself? He died here long ago fighting some monstrous general of the Old Gods. His comrades buried him here and the corpse of that beast further in. This tomb was also meant to guard the prison tomb of that monster, but the Twilight Hammer put a stop to that. The Shadow Deacon used that blade of his to get in, and his minions keep the wards down while he went below. These boogers are suppressing Tears' wards, so the Deacon can do his work below. We need to take them down. Start by dispelling the wards on the Ritualists. The Shadow Deacon? Who is this new leader? The Hammer has been in disarray since their Twilight Father and Deathwing took a dive. I'm guessing that when the Legion attacked, one of the leaders that was left took to the idea of taking over while everyone was distracted. He dredged up an ancient artifact of the old gods and is planning to use it on that dead monstrosity down there to cement his takeover of the cult. I didn't get a good look at the Deacon, but he seems really familiar. You mentioned a magical blade. Can you tell me more? That blade. I knew Moira would want to know. I think that dagger has been behind some of the worst nightmares Azeroth has seen. If I remember me stories, it looks similar to the stories told about the War of Three Hammers and Grim Batol. It oozes shadow and seems to cut the very light. I think it might have a mind of its own, too. It seems the Shadow Deacon is sometimes talking and arguing, but to nobody at all. We'd best stop this ritual and pry that blade loose of the cult. A trap! <sighs> Destroy that creature before it kills us! Eliminate all life. Hey, the path to the prison should be open. Well, if it ain't me old friend. We'd be doing the world a favor, written into this, buddy. More of the Deacon's mind games. We could master spell them, or just fight through them. But it wouldn't get too close. Once Sakaj lives again, I will hold dominion over this world! Our old leaders chose to work with pawns. I choose the real power!
This is no good. I can hear more coming from above. I'll handle them. Ye take care of the Deacon. Defend me, Blade. You said this would work. With this weapon, I can do anything. Anything! You cannot trust your own mind! This... this shouldn't be happening! Why aren't you protecting me? Weak and pitiful, the Twilight Father did not dare wield me, for he knew the price of failure. Give me another chance! No! No! You, on the other hand. Yes, I foresee us doing great things together. Take hold of my haft and I will aid you, for now. Yes, we are eager to feast on the fallen Titan's minions. But first, Zakaj. The cultists may try to stir him again, or he could awaken on his own. We must consume his essence to ensure he is gone forever. You know this must be done. Cultists have run off! <laughs> ye should get back to foul. I'll use this Twilight Portal Stone for ye. Keep an eye on that blade, though. No telling was something that old be capable of. Look! Our hero has returned! This champion shows talent! Well done, indeed. An ancient and terrible force trembles deep within Zalatath, Blade of the Black Empire. Though this dagger can serve as a powerful tool for those who wield shadow magic, tread cautiously. Zalatath has a mind of its own. Ignore its maddening whispers. Do not trust the lies it spins. Take from it what you need, but always remember that the dark presence in the blade is not your ally. Zalatath had its dark genesis in an age long before the Horde and Alliance, an age when the legendary old gods and their black empire engulfed the world in shadow. There are many theories concerning the blade's creation. The more outlandish claim that it is all that remains of a forgotten old god who was consumed by its kin in the early days of the Black Empire. Other theories state that Zalatath is the claw of Yeshiraj, ripped from the old god's monstrous form and bestowed upon its servants for use in ritual sacrifices. Unbelievable as these stories are, perhaps there is truth to them. Zalatath pulses with the foul essence of the old gods. It is even said that the blade can grant its owner visions of the Black Empire, but all who have looked upon such horrors have lost themselves to madness. Mighty beings known as the Titanforged eventually defeated the Black Empire. They shackled the old gods and their minions in prisons beneath the earth. Harmony descended on Azeroth, but it was not to last. Zalatath made sure of that. The blade remained in the world, passing from mortal hand to mortal hand, leaving only death and chaos in its wake. One of the unfortunate souls who took up Zalatath was a troll named Zando. 
the ambitious witch doctor hailed from the mighty Gurubashi tribe. His rivals had ousted him from a position of power and prestige, and Zando spent his days nursing dreams of retribution. It was a simple thing for Zalatath to latch onto Zando's anger and twist him into a pawn. Guided by Zalatath's whispers, Zando and a handful of loyal witch doctors sought out a strange mound of blackened stone. Troll mystics had forbidden their people from disturbing this site, but Zando ignored the taboo. He believed the mound held great power, power he could use to defeat his rivals. He and his followers would soon discover what the mound really was, the body of a slumbering servant of the old gods named Kithix. Zalatath urged Zando to make blood offerings to the creature. With his mind consumed by the blade, the witch doctor did not hesitate. He dismembered some of his own companions with the dagger, then used their blood and organs as reagents to awaken the monstrosity. In a final act, Zandu buried his gore-stained dagger into Kithix's hide, and the giant rumbled to life. Zando and his followers were never seen again. Trolls would later visit the site and find only scattered bones picked clean of flesh. After Kithix awakened, it brought a shadow of war upon Azeroth. The monstrous creature rallied other old god minions to its side and launched a campaign to grind troll civilization into dust. Unlike the trolls who had roused it, Kithix knew how to harness Zalatath's true potential. Calling on the blade's power, the Kithrax spread pestilence among the trolls to weaken their bodies, and it bombarded them with visions of death to weaken their minds. Though the trolls would eventually destroy Kithix and defeat its armies, Zalatath would haunt the dreams of the survivors until the end of their days. Many tribes would recount legends about the Black Blade that had nearly driven them to extinction. From Chapter 4 of Modgud's Doom, concerning the day the Dark Iron Sorceress acquired Zalatath, Modgud embraced her clan's long history of studying arcane magic. As the wife of sorcerer Thane Tharason, she had first pick of the Dark Iron's most powerful enchanted artifacts. Yet she was never quite satisfied with the offerings on hand. Modgood would often dispatch her servants to find new relics that she could study and use as instruments in the creation of spells. One of these dwarves returned with a blade that thrummed with dark energy. Modgood was immediately taken by it. For days, she retreated into her archives to unravel the dagger's mysteries. At times, she could be seen talking to the weapon. When she later emerged, Modgood called for the dwarf who had brought the blade in order to thank him. No one could ever find him. No one could even remember his name or his face. It was as if he had simply vanished into thin air. From Chapter 23 of Modgood's Doom, concerning the battle between the Dark Iron Clan and the Wildhammer Clan in Grim Batol. War golems smashed through Grim Batol's gates, and the Dark Iron soldiers poured into the Wildhammer capital. Bitter rivals these two clans were, neither side showed the other mercy. The Wildhammer's bravery was their greatest weapon, and Modgud sought to take that from them. Under the thunderous clash of hammer against axe, she screamed an incantation and wove her profane spellwork. She slid her enchanted dagger over her palm and let her blood spill onto the stones. Modgood's foul ritual brought Grim Batol's shadows to life. They sprang from the city's dark nooks and crannies, falling upon the wild hammers with blades forged of night. Chapter 27 of Modgood's Doom, recounting the final moments of the Dark Iron invasion of Grim Batol. By some feat of courage, Thane Cardos rallied his remaining Wildhammer warriors and launched a desperate counterattack against the Dark Irons. Cadros bowled through his enemies with the single-minded focus of a war golem, only coming to a stop when he found Modgood. Here, the fate of Wildhammer and Dark Iron would be decided. The sorceress unleashed her dark power on Cadros, but he pressed his attack. Then Modgood reached for her black blade the weapon that had turned Grim Batol into a den of nightmare. It was not there. 
she had lost her cherished weapon. Or, as some would claim, the weapon had abandoned her. With one mighty blow of his hammer, Cardgos mortally wounded Modgood and secured victory for the Wildhammers. It is said that as the sorceress lay dying, she repeated one phrase over and over again. You promised. Decades after Modgood lost to Zalatath, the blade was taken up by a human bishop named Natalie Selene. She had lived through the First War, when the Orcish Horde invaded Azeroth and conquered Stormwind. After the war, Selene realized that to defeat the green-skinned orcs, humanity would need to study the strange powers they wielded. She closely examined their magics, and she visited the battle sites where their dark arts had befouled the land. From her investigations, she learned of an otherworldly blade that the orcs had once used in their bloody rituals a blade that held sway over the shadows themselves. Troubled that such a profane weapon could exist, Selene swore to hunt it down and destroy it in the name of the light. From the Secrets of the Void by Natalie Selene The moment I touched the blade, a name was spoken in my mind, Zalatath. I knew then that I could not destroy the dagger. Not yet. How can one defeat a power she does not understand? and I had much to understand, very much indeed. Zalatath whispered to me in waking and in dreaming. It also taught me that there is more to this world than light. There is also void. In the ebb and flow between these two forces, one can find power and knowledge beyond anything the Church of the Holy Light has ever revealed to us. One can cross the divide between light and void. One can pull strands from each side and weave a tapestry of day and night. Of course, there are consequences. There always are when walking in the shadows. By the time of the Second War, Natalie had learned how to wield shadow magic from Zalatath. She had taught her dangerous arts to other worshippers of the light and rallied them against the Horde. Selene and her followers waged their war in secret, hunting down orcs across the human kingdoms. Zalatath continued whispering in Selene's mind, slowly unraveling her sanity. Despite her noble intentions, she became more and more obsessed with the blade and the mysteries of the void. So did Selene's companions. They were overzealous in their campaign against the orcs, putting innocent lives at risk. Some strayed too far into shadow, forsaking the light completely. Though Selene urged her followers to use caution, her calls were ignored and even treated with suspicion. It is unclear exactly what happened to the former bishop, but some sources state that Zalatath incited rebellion amongst her allies. It convinced them that Selene was holding them back from their true potential, holding back knowledge and power they could have if they killed her. In the dead of night, the conspirators murdered Selene, then took Zalatath for themselves. For years, the Kirin Tor Magi in Dalaran had watched Natalie Selene, greatly troubled by her dark teachings. After her death, they set out to scour her writings from history. Magi picked through the villages and cities Selene had traveled, gathering up every scroll and tome she had penned. The Kirintor hid these writings in Dalaran, hoping that would be the end of Selene's dangerous brand of magic. Yet despite their efforts, they could not bury the doctrine of balance she had preached. In the years to come, others would take up her teachings and devote themselves to the light and the void. The Magi also knew of Zalatath, but they never found it. Like Selene's teachings, the blade would not simply fade away. It had more minds to twist, more pawns to use, and more innocence to terrorize. Thanks for watching! Remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future adventures. May the shadows embrace you until we meet next in the world of Warcraft.